So what exactly is an EART guitar? Well, a bunch of you guys were asking me to review one. So here we are. It's one of the more interesting guitars I've had in the studio in a while. So let's jump in and check this thing out. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day today. Well, we've got a subscriber requested review in the studio here. Actually, a bunch of you guys kept asking me, Daryl, can you check out these EART guitars? Now, I'd never heard of them before, but I headed over to Amazon and, you know, at first look, it just sort of seemed like another overseas company making, you know, their version of famous guitars. And I was like, well, do I want to look at this thing or not? But I looked a little closer and it turns out like they put stainless steel frets on all their entry level guitars, something I've never seen before. And they all have roasted maple necks. So I was like, okay, well, this is getting a little more interesting. So I went ahead and ordered one and I figured, well, if I'm going to see what these EART guitars are all about, let's see what they can do with like a semi hollow. I figure any company can kind of slap out, you know, a Strat style guitar or a Tele. Uh, but what about a semi hollow? I think that might tell me a little bit more about this company than, uh, you know, just a solid body guitar. So here we are with the EART E335. Let's jump in and check this thing out. Right, now this guitar is a little confusing. I know in my mind where it should fit in with the market, with the other guitars in its price range, and I've featured a lot of, you know, 335 clones on this channel. A couple Fireflies, uh, Indio Boardwalk, uh, Harley Benton, I think it's the HB35, and now the EART. So I know in my mind where this guitar should fit in with the others. The Firefly are kind of like the really affordable entry, you know, great value guitars. Uh, Indio Boardwalk is a step up. Harley Benton is another step up. Now this EART is another step up. So this guitar retails for, I think it was three... 389 US, I think. So just under 400 bucks. So it's sitting above the Harley Benton and still, I think about 150 bucks cheaper than like an, an Epiphone or something like that. So I know in my mind where this should sit in the price tier. The problem is when I go to play it. So the problem lies with my left hand. As soon as I start playing this guitar, it's telling my brain, you're playing a very expensive guitar, a $2,000, a $3,000 guitar. But my brain knows that's not true, and it's very confusing. So yes, we're going to talk about the fretwork here, uh, and really this is one of the reasons why I decided to feature it on the channel, because it does have stainless steel frets. So let's dive in and talk about that, because that is one of the biggest deals of this EART guitar. So this guitar has some of the nicest fretwork I've played on any guitar like ever, which is an insane statement, I know, but it's true. It blows away anything I've ever played on a Gibson, on a PRS, on a Fender. Um, yeah, it's insane. So let's take a closer look at that and we'll actually do a little comparison between this very, very expensive Gibson and this relatively cheap EART guitar. So anyway, when we look at the front face of the frets, you can see they're crazy shiny, they're beaming. So sliding, vibrato, bending, all of that on this guitar is beautiful. It's just straight out of the box. You don't have to do anything. And when we talk about like the Harley Bentons, the, the Boardwalk, the Firefly, all of them were very gritty on the front face and needed to be polished or, or played in. None of that here. It's just ready to go and beautiful. And when we look at the fret ends, it gets even more crazy. So when we zoom in, you can see how rounded off they are. Um, a fret treatment I've only really seen, I think, on Ibanez guitars. So, and pretty expensive ones, but yeah, the fret end treatment uh, just rounded off so smooth, uh, a very, very premium, you know, feel. Now, when we contrast that with this very expensive Gibson in Canada here, a Les Paul standards, like 3,500 bucks, something like that, uh, insanely expensive. Uh, well, on the Gibson, you can see, you know, there's still tooling marks on the fret ends, you know, they're shaped nicely. Uh, but when we look back at that EART, it's just a night and day difference. So that's why I keep coming back to this guitar and playing it. That left hand experience is just so high end and so beautiful. Now, of course, we'll talk about the overall construction in a second and if the rest of the guitar is good uh, and of course give you guys a bunch of tones. But that's one of the, the, the features on this guitar that I really wanted to look at is these stainless steel frets and they're 
awesome. There's nothing bad to say about it. And even the way the guitar was set up, it was just set up to play. Beautiful low action, no buzzing. And as I mentioned, I just went out and randomly bought it. So, you know, if anyone else does that, hopefully you'll have the same experience as well. But overall, like, yeah, A++ on this part of the guitar. Let's check out the rest of the specs and give you guys some tones. Now, as for the official specs, well, there's almost nothing online. It says it's got a mahogany top, a mahogany back, a roasted maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, stainless steel frets, and that's about it. Nothing about, you know, the tuning machines, the nut, the hardware, the pickups, all of that is a mystery. So we'll look at that and go through the guitar with a fine tooth comb uh, in a second. But let's plug this thing in and see what it sounds like. Obviously, that's hugely important. We know it plays well, but let's check out some tones. All right, you guys, let's do some informal noodling and just see if we can figure out what this guitar sounds like. Let's start in the neck pickup here. Well, right away I'm noticing good string to string volume. There's no string that's like louder than the other. So a great balance. Um, yeah, and just very, very warm and full. Let's try this tone control. I'm going to just back it off a little bit here. So a good range on that tone pot for sure. Let's try the middle pickup uh, doing the same kind of thing. Again, really nice and balanced. Let's try the bridge, see if it's uh, super powerful and honky or if it's got just nice chime. Here we go. A little bit hotter for sure. Yeah, overall great sounding pickups. Let's add a little bit of boost here. I'm going to stay on channel one. I'm playing through my Meza Barba. So we'll just boost channel one here. Nice. Okay, well, let's go over to channel two, uh, which has a little bit more gain. So. You know, pretty good sustain and ringing out right up here at the very, very top. Lots of guitars kind of die out there or you don't get, you know, clear, clean and clear tones up there. Uh, so overall, pretty great. Let's go over to channel three and maybe just do some chugging. We better go right to the, the bridge pick up there. Now, right away, it's not feeding back and it doesn't seem too microphonic or whatever. Uh, some of the Fireflies guitars, I think, uh, spoke too soon. Maybe it's about to feed back. <laughs> anyway, some of the Firefly guitars had trouble with being microphonic. This one doesn't seem to be too bad that way, and we got quite a bit of gain here.
definitely not super hot pickups or whatever. Nothing with mid scoop. There's tons of mids there. Um, so yeah, it gives a good sound. Let's try, uh, yeah, maybe up on the neck with uh, that, that gain there as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not much to complain about when it comes to the tones on this guitar. Certainly on par with, uh, I think of the three brands, like the Firefly, the Indio, the Harley Benton. I mean, I had some issues with all of those guitars, um, but I think I like the pickups the best on the Harley Benton. And I think these ones are on par with those at least. So um, I don't think you're going to struggle getting some good balanced tones some creamy leads, um, some jazzy tones, and you know even some some okay-ish high gain tones. But I think you'd really want to scoop out your amp because these pickups uh, definitely are like kind of more fuller traditional style pickups. So yeah, overall, pretty impressed with the tones. So nothing weird with the pickups or the electronics. Everything functions as it should. Uh, the three-way switch doesn't feel amazing but it gets the job done. We actually have full-size pots under here too, which is great. I can't see the brand, but I can see that they're full-size, so that is great. Now, the first thing I wanted to do when talking about like the overall construction or the overall picture of this guitar was throw it on the scale because this guitar feels very, very light, but I wasn't quite prepared for this. I threw it up there and it's just over six pounds. It's like 6.2 pounds. That's phenomenal. I think my Epiphone BB King model, signature model was like closer to eight and a half. That's like two and a half pounds more than this one. So it's six, just over six pounds. And there's no hint of like headstock dive at all. I guess you guys can't see that. But anyway, uh, yeah, there's no diving like this at all. Partially due to, I think the, the shape of the headstock. Uh, but obviously on this style of guitar, there's a lot of weight because of the, <laughs> the size of that. So it just sits perfectly, you know, ergonomically, the 335 design is not going to be amazing, like compared to a Strat or something like that, but it's light, crazy light. So love that. Uh, but let's talk about like the overall construction and some of the parts and take a look at them in closer detail. So let's look at the headstock. Uh, shape looks really nice. It's quite attractive to me. Um, and then you can see the EART logo up there. Um, and on the back side, you can see they're just unbranded tuners, but this guitar has been holding tune like a champ. Uh, they feel okay. Maybe, you know, might be due for an upgrade, but you know, overall this guitar, you know, whatever I played five or six minutes straight for you guys and lots of bending and that kind of stuff. And it just holds tune. So overall, I think that's good. Now, when we move on to the nut, nothing's listed, uh, as to the material. So I can only guess, but you know, some of the entry level guitars like the Firefly, I think, and some of the others have bone nuts here. I have no idea. All I can say is it's hyper clean. Like it's very, very clean. So that's a good sign and it holds tune. That's another great sign. So overall, I think the nut, the headstock, the tuning machine, it's a nice design. You know, you don't have too extreme headstock uh, tilt back there. So that's great as well. Um, and then when we look at the neck, we've already talked about the fretwork. We'll talk about that some more in a second, uh, but it says it's roasted maple. Uh, I have no idea because the whole thing is tinted. So I can't tell one way or the other. Now, as for the rest of the neck, the fingerboard, the binding, well, it's a little hit and miss. Construction wise, it's really good. And as I mentioned, those frets are amazing, uh, but there's like spots where stain has kind of dripped out onto the, the binding and onto the fret ends. Um, that just needs to be cleaned up. And when I spend almost 400 bucks US, so by the time it gets to me in Canada, it was like closer to 500 bucks. I don't want to have to do that. I think that should have been done and should have been caught. And when we look at these upper, upper frets here, you can see how ugly it is. Um, number one, the fret ends way up high are still sublime. I got to say that <laughs> like all those fret ends just kill. They're so awesome. Uh, but they're ugly, like that stain should have been removed. So uh, a little bit of a hit and miss and some of the same things that I went through with like, yeah, the Harley Benton, the Boardwalk, the Firefly, same kind of stuff that you kind of wish wasn't on this guitar because it is more expensive than the others. Um, so yeah, that is what it is. Now in terms of, um, yeah, the rest of the stuff looks really good. Even the way the posts are attached to the body, sometimes even on Epiphones, you'll see like these back posts tilting forward or popping up or doing this or that. None of that here. It just looks really good and really well made. Uh, when we look at the F hole binding, 
super nice again. Um, and on some of these guitars, again, it's been hit and miss where that binding is just super ugly on, our st <laughs> on like a beautiful guitar. Um, and happy to say here, uh, on both sides, very, very clean. And overall, the binding is quite nice on this. There's no, you know, on the body itself, there's no stain or there's no discoloration or anything like that. Uh, just on the neck there, I think they must have been staining the fingerboard or doing something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, overall, the rest of it is pretty good. Now, I should mention something that you cannot see on the on Amazon or any of the pictures is the the finish on this body is an open pour finish. And I've seen that on a few guitars and I think I know why they did it. I'll take some close ups so you guys can see what, you know, I mean, it's like where you purposely do a thin finish so that the grain comes through and you can feel the texture of the grain. And I think that's just to give this guitar sort of a vintage flair, right? It is a vintage looking guitar. So I think they did that open pour finish, um, you know, to kind of give it that worn in, you know, 60s look or 50s look, you know, like uh, an old school guitar. And on the neck, it is just straight satin. So, you know, they did it on the body on purpose. Um, and I do like the, the satin finish on the neck, by the way. That's nice. Um, yeah, but overall, I think the combination of like an open pour finish, it might be hard to see, but when you hold the guitar, you can clearly see it. Um, and the bright white binding just kind of doesn't do it for me. I think if you're going to go with an open pour finish, go with a cream binding. That would kind of like complement the look. But this bright white binding looks brand new and the rest of the body is sort of made to look old. So I would say either give this guitar like a, a thick clear coat finish like you would see on most guitars or go with cream binding and stick with the open pour. So got to say that. And there are some finish runs. There's some spots where you can see, I don't know if it's sawdust or this or that, or, you know, under the finish. So it's not like super premium on the finish. Overall, I'd say it's well done, but it's not perfect. Now, another little cool touch that you definitely don't see on 335 style guitars is you've got sort of like the swing gate uh, truss rod adjustment cover. So you don't have to break out the screwdriver. You can use a pick or just your finger, flip open the, the cavity cover, make your adjustment, and then just snap it back in place and you're done. So that's kind of like a nice little touch. But overall, I would say it's a well-made guitar. Again, with guitars in this price range, you're going to end up with a few little quirks in the finish or, you know, like I said, some of that stain on the binding, you know, nothing that's going to be a deal breaker, but you're going to find them on guitars in this price range. The big difference here is the playability and compared to, as I mentioned, the ones that I've featured on this channel, the Harley Benton, the Boardwalk, the Firefly, um, I've done full and very detailed, um, you know, demos on those guitars. Uh, this is a nicer guitar than all of those for sure. It plays nicer and it's lighter than all of them. Um, so it is a good guitar, but it is more expensive. As I said, I think it's 389. Um, so you're going to be spending more money, but is it a good guitar? Well, yes, it's lightweight, uh, but most importantly, it plays like way more than it's worth and certainly uh, better playing than all those other brands. So that's great. So anyway, that's my experience. Obviously, I've only played one of these guitars, so I can't speak to, you know, their other styles. But so far, I mean, very surprised at this guitar and I can overlook some of the things, you know, like the finish, the open pour finish and that kind of stuff, just because when I pick it up and play it, it's such a great experience. And I'm, it kind of ca catches me off guard every time. Like I pick it up and I'm like, what am I playing here? <laughs> it's so weird. So it's a joy to play. And that's the main thing. When you buy a guitar, you want to enjoy it. So yes, there's going to be some quirks on these and I have no idea what they're, you know, as I said, this is the first guitar I've ever played of there. So I don't know what, you know, the quality control is like on all these brands. Um, you know, it's going to take some time and some user reviews as more and more people, um, you know, take a chance really on these guitars. But overall, a great experience for me. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the demo. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise, a bit of a mixed bag. Overall, very, very positive though. So this is the EART E335. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. All my information, link to the guitars, all that stuff will be down in the video description below. Other than that, have yourself a great day.